and welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are we doing today? Doing great, fam. How is you be on this fine Tuesday night? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I hope everybody else is good. Am I in focus? Who cares? Who even cares? I said like here. That's fine. I hope we're all great. I'm great. Uh, we have a lot of things to talk about today. Uh, it's been a busy day. Yeah. it's re- The day gets really busy when you wake up at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, <laughs> they just, uh, day just breezes on by. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, so anyway. Uh, oh, we, do we have notifications or anything? I don't know. I'm all messed up. Tux Bobble with 18 months. Haven't been around much, but trying to keep the streak alive. Thanks, Tux Bobble. I appreciate you. You don't have to be here all the time. You, Everybody's got a busy yeah. life. Yeah, you Enjoy be yourselves. here as much as you feel you can. We won't think any less of you. Well, today was your daughter's birthday. It was. How was it? Was. She, it was It was fun. It was nice. It was a low-key affair. Just me, the wife, uh, my in-laws. Had a couple of friends stop by to drop off some gifts, but it was nice. She has too much crap for a one-year-old. <laughs> I know. I, I, so there's a little group chat where all you do is post pictures of the baby with all, with all, yeah. our whole families in this group chat. It's just pictures of the baby. Um, yeah. one of the pictures was one of your friends dropped off some balloons. Yes. There's a big one balloon. It's a, yeah. it looks like a penis. Well, I didn't want to say anything in the chat. Look, so <laughs> as soon as, as soon as he left and we put it, we tied it to our little, uh, cart thing we looked at it and we're just like yeah that's that's a dick can i show the picture of the of the balloon sure (laughs) okay this is this is the penis come on guys i mean am i making that up am i making that up (laughs) i thought it was just my dirty mind but no no we thought the same thing but you Uh, know what at least he uh he stopped by and he dropped off a gift true True. Yeah. Unlike her actual uncle. Hey. <laughs> it's the it's the first minute of the podcast or else I would curse. Uh, anyway, Microsoft did something. Yukio, thank you for the two months. Forgot about the sw- the Twitch sub. Don't forget. Never forget. Get ripped, bro. Shut up, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to buy her a Nintendo Switch just so F you will. <laughs> but put as many screens in front of her as possible. Okay. So Xbox did an oopsie this week. They did a little, yep. a little no-no. So I think the first article I have in here completely rewrote itself after the, the switch up. But luckily, Xbox's article has the original content still at the bottom. Oh. So we can see... You know, what happened. Oh, so it just has... So Xbox's article just has a bunch of X's all over the bottom. So so this... What day was this? Uh, This was... Yeah. Which was Friday. Mm -hmm. So so they they posted this on Friday, uh, and the internet blew up for a few hours. It it was up for a long time, completely uncontested. Um, yeah. Basically, they hiked up the price of Xbox Live Gold, uh, the Gold subscription, yeah. which is the subscription that allows you to sh- to play video games with with other people. Our stream yeah. crashed. I- ignore it. Pretend like it didn't immediately. Happen. Immediately. I know. So, what do you want to do? You want to read the you want to read the article? I'll I'll read. This? Let's let's read what Microsoft initially posted, and then. Uh, go back and see the update. Just okay. go in chronological order. All right. So, originally, Microsoft posted, since we launched Xbox Live 18 years ago, we've been working to make it the most advanced multiplayer network available for the greatest community of gamers, and there are a lot of you. Millions of people come together on Xbox to play with friends and discover great games We invest in our community by strengthening the digital safety of our players, enabling new ways to share, communicate, and play with your friends, and delivering industry-leading reliability across our network. 
Periodically, we assess the value of pricing. We assess the value and pricing of our services to reflect changes in regional markets and to continue to invest in the Xbox community. Wait, 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 wait where are you reading right now? Bottom. Scroll down. Uh, All the non bold stuff. So this is the original stuff. This is the original stuff. All right, go 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 ahead. All right. Remember when I said we we're going to go in chronological order? Start with what they originally posted in. Yeah, but it's, I'm one. confused because it's all the way down. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm Periodic doing a thousand things over here. Okay. <laughs> in many markets, the the price of Xbox Live Gold has not changed for years, and in some markets, it hasn't changed for over ten years. So, what does this mean for you? And I'm going to read the stuff that I got crossed out too because it's important. Yeah. Uh, if you're an if you're an existing online twelve month or six month Xbox Live Gold member, there is no price change. If you choose to renew your membership, it will renew at your current price. The price of a one month Gold membership is increasing by one U.S. dollar, and the price of a three month membership is increasing by five U.S. dollars, or the equivalent amount in your local market. If you if you'd like to upgrade your gold membership to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, your remaining gold time will also convert directly to Ultimate up to 36 months. For example, if you have oh. 11 months of Xbox Live Gold now and you upgrade to Game Pass Ultimate, those 11 months convert to 11 months of Ultimate at no additional cost. Members have already been notified of, in some regions. If you're in a region where prices are being adjusted, you will receive an email and a message center notification over the next month letting you know what the new pricing is for your membership. Going forward, the, going forward new pricing will be one month for $10.99, three months for $29.99, and six months for $59.99 or your local market equivalent. You can always visit your account to manage your membership and prices won't adjust until 45 days after you receive the messages. Okay. So, 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 you, so, 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 if so you, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, if you miss that, the, the big stink is uh, Microsoft announced the price increase for Xbox Live Gold. One month would now be $10.99. Three months would now be $29.99. And six months would now be $59.99. Fifty nine ninety nine used to be the price for twelve for an entire year of gold, and now, according to the statement, it's only worth the equivalent of half of that, which is effectively doubling the price. Everybody was saying right. it was doubling the price when, in reality, it was really just you're getting half of the value, which is kind of the same thing. Um, it's, it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> so uh, th there's there's two things happening here. One, everybody yeah. ex kind of expected Microsoft to kind of care less about Xbox Gold and try to push people into an ultimate subscription. And this right. is them trying to do that. And and two, everybody kind of expected the price of gold or, or the price of just playing online in general to go up in value because uh, historically it's been the price of a game when it was the right. original xbox it was 50 dollars. Mm -hmm. it took them a while but when games started to become 60 dollars, they slowly you know made the yeah. price 60 it, it, like they said it's been 10 years since they increased it to 60 dollars, which was the during the 360 era we're so old i know so, God. so now we expected it to be like 70 dollars because the price of a game is right. 70 dollars uh, this is crazy talk, Make, making it yeah. double the price. <laughs> this, to me, is just saying nobody buy gold. Everybody buy ultimate. Yeah, we don't Basically. want. They should. What they should have done, if they if that was the case, they should have just gotten rid of gold entirely. They should have just been like, we're not doing gold anymore. If you have it, mm -hmm. you can st you'll still have it for the remainder. But uh, nobody's gonna have gold in 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 like a year yeah. from now. It's either gonna be, you know, Game Pass Ultimate or nothing. <laughs> Yeah, they uh this is uh anti consumer. This is this is being this is like forcing people out of gold. Yeah. Uh via via uh you know, an exorbitant price yeah. in, instead of just yeah. instead of just being like get this, it's a better deal, you know? Yeah. Um because Game Pass Ultimate is a much better deal. I think everybody should, who has gold and wants to a bigger library of games should just go for yeah. Ultimate anyway. But they didn't 
provide the value. They just slapped everybody with a bill out of nowhere. Yeah. But anyway, everybody made a big stink on the internet. Uh, rightfully so. They doubled the price. Mm. Um, also, another thing to note, uh, Xbox Live is the only uh, online subscription platform or multiplayer platform that mm -hmm. doesn't allow you to play free to play games online with other people yes. for free so if you want so, to play warzone or uh or fortnite or fortnite you, yeah. you have to, you have, to have you have to have gold you have to yeah. pay for the subscription in order to play these free games that doesn't happen yeah. on playstation that doesn't happen on nintendo switch and yeah. everybody hates Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course it doesn't happen with PC because there's no such thing on PC. So yeah. uh, Microsoft is lagging behind in that regard too. Yeah. So that brings us to uh, Microsoft's big old update, right? Yeah. Update uh, later that same day at 8.52 p.m. Uh, so literally the, the at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. We messed up today, and you were right to let us know. Connecting and playing with friends is a vital part of gaming, and we failed to meet expectations of players who count on it every day. As a result, we have decided not to change Xbox Live Gold pricing. We're turning this moment into an opportunity to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the player at the center of the experience. For free-to-play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We are working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible in the month in the coming months. If you are an Xbox Live Gold member already, you stay at your current price for renewal. New and existing members can continue to enjoy Xbox Live Gold for the same prices they pay today in the US for $9.99 a month, $24.99 for three months, $39.99 for six months, or $59.99 for 12 months. And then they say thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Microsoft also, well, not Microsoft, Xbox also tweeted at the same time. Today was not great. <laughs> we always try to do our best for you. And today we missed the mark. We hear you and we're releasing our, we're reversing our Xbox Live Gold pricing updates. I don't know what made them think this was going to be all cool with everybody. Especially the amount that they were raising yeah, it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's a difference between a price increase and what they did. You know, yeah. again, they they doubled the pr they literally doubled the price of one year of gold, which yeah. is in many cases astronomical. It's astronomical, and it's not even the service is losing its value. It's not yeah. like it's it's not like it's more. It's not like they're adding stuff and they're making it better. It's losing yeah. its value because Ultimate is so much better and, and Game Pass yeah. is so much better. Um, a lot of people were saying this is, uh, what's it called? Uh, like, they're doing this because of the pandemic, because services uh, saw a huge surge in, in, in users, and Xbox Live isn't an exception to that. Uh, yeah. So in seeing that surge, they were like, oh, look at that. We can, we can fish some more money out of these people. Yeah. That's what people were, were saying. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. It could have been the case. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it, the, the whole thing was a, was a bad move on, on Microsoft's part. Oh, but yeah. they reversed it, which is uh, something Microsoft learned very... They learned <laughs> how to do very well. They're very good at reversing yeah. uh, their big controversies ever since the Xbox One came out. Yeah. Uh, Lickios in the chat says it's your fault for constantly supporting Xbox services. Will, <laughs> not Will specifically, but yeah, uh, but in I'm general. saying Will. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's another thing. People, you know, everybody's talking about how, uh, you know, on PC, you don't got to pay any of this. Okay. Yeah. Um. But the thing is, at least on console, you know, initially when they set when. Microsoft announced we're going to launch Xbox Live, but it's going to be, you know, a paid membership. You know, people balked at it because Sony didn't charge for PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3 online. PC, mm -hmm. of course, was oh, and continues to be free. But part of, you know, because it was paid, it made it the best option for gaming online on console. 
it took to the PS4 really for Sony to catch up and match what uh, Microsoft was offering on their Xbox systems for their online services. Yep. Uh, whereas for the most part, uh, Xbox Live was always reliable, always stable, had a lot of great features uh, for online gaming that people had access to. And it wasn't really until the PS4 that Sony was able to match that. And even still, they have like connectivity issues all the time. So, so, uh, so when the PlayStation 3 was out, that's when they started charging, right? That's when Sony started charging? That, that's, that's when they started charging for PS Plus, but mm-hmm. online play was still free. PS4 is when they started charging specifically for online play. Oh, so what was what did you get with PlayStation Plus before it? Basically, like discounts and um, f- you know free things, uh, cloud saving. We, Eventually, they added the uh, free games and stuff. I'm pretty sure we had it, right? No, I don't no, think we, we had. I, it. I didn't really play PlayStation Three that much. Yeah, I, I was more. Yeah, no, we didn't get. Xbox. We didn't get it until we got PS4. But but remember there was the big hacks. They got hacked twice when PlayStation Plus right. was a thing, and that was a big controversy too because like that didn't happen with Microsoft. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, and then after that they you know, they gave free games they gave free games as like a Mia Coupla, but they saw the success of that and then they added free games to the price of PlayStation Plus. Right. So they 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 got hacked twice, but it it was in such a way where the service was down for like yeah. a whole day twice. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and Nintendo Switch Online—that's another one that I mean, it's significantly cheaper than these other yes. two, but it is also significantly worse. Um, yeah. But a lot of the reasons why Switch Online is worse is because of Nintendo's own development. It's not really because yeah. of the service <laughs> itself. Yeah. Um, like you still get a lot of great games, all those old retro games. I know a lot of people don't care about the retro games, but I really care yeah. about the retro games. So it's a good value for me there. It's only twenty dollars a year. Um, yeah, and we have a family plan. It's like twenty five dollars for a family. No, thirty. It's like thirty, I think. It's thirty yeah, but for a family st- plan, and you get up to like freaking eight people. Eight. I want to make yeah. sure I get this right. So when you do buy my daughter that switch, you just add her to the family plan. Yeah, me and Will have a family plan, and we got yeah. two, six other users could just hop on over. Yeah, you know, um, thirty five. It's thirty five. So we're really yeah. only saving five bucks, but you can have up to eight. Oh, so we could put our mom on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh. Yeah, the, most of the reason why Switch Online is bad is because of Nintendo's own, Nintendo's own development in their games. They don't yeah. do online very good. Um, but And also the stupid Nintendo Switch Online app. That app is garbage. Oh, yeah. They could have done a lot more with it. The fact that they kind of use that as voice chat is like an abomination. Is Yeah, 100%. Um, I went on there the other day to like see if I can access the eShop through it, and you can't. Meanwhile, the Xbox and PlayStation apps, it's like a f- the only thing you can't do is play games on. You can do everything else. You can chat with friends. You can buy games. Uh, you can curate your wish list, things like that. The the Xbox app is fantastic. Uh, yeah. When I take a screenshot or take a video, it immediately gives me a notification on my phone and I can immediately download it. And then from there, yeah. I can put it wherever I want. And um, then, you know, ever since they revamped the PlayStation app, it's like, such a nice experience it's like basically using the console without playing games i used to be in high school uh Mm -hmm. and i used to use the xbox app in high school to see who's playing (laughs) even though i was you know i was in high school yeah i was in class no one else should be playing and i would just look at everybody's like gamer scores and stuff and i thought that was like yeah yeah it was fun so so that having a nice app that's like nicely laid out is nice And, and the nintendo one is not a good experience. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do on it. It's like, why do I even have it on my phone? <laughs> uh, some people were arguing that uh, because you the user base surged because of the pandemic, that people mm-hmm. like companies like Microsoft would have to pay uh, more for servers and whatnot. Um, right. I think that that is untrue. <laughs> I think that yeah. they, especially Microsoft, has plenty of infrastructure to be able oh, to yeah. support a surge like that. Also, we've been paying forever for Xbox yeah. Live, so they got plenty of money to be able to support a surge like that, and that's yeah. what we're paying for. We're paying for 
events like this where there's a big surge in users we're paying mm -hmm. so that they're able to handle that stuff there were points in time like remember when battlefield 4 came out for playstation uh 4 yeah, yeah and it that was, was a it, launch title it didn't work for two weeks the game just yeah, did not you, work you couldn't play multiplayer like at all and yeah. multiplayer is like the only reason to play a battlefield game it that happened with a lot of games at, at mm. the time that the game would come out and the game just wouldn't work for a week yeah. Um, now games come out and they work instantly and everything is great and we kind of take that for granted. Like I, yeah. I freaking put Cold War in and it works right off the bat after you download the, the 200 gigabyte update. Right. But still. Exactly. Um. There, there, there were times where I tried to download a Switch game at midnight and it just wasn't out. Yeah. Or there's times where the Nintendo servers kind of crash. Like, uh, people had trouble downloading the Monster Hunter Rise demo for the first like hour mm -hmm. it was out. But that's only like an hour, you know. But we're paying so that things like that don't happen. And and Microsoft yeah. is is uh, you know, they're a tech company, so th so they they know yeah, how to handle they, that they, stuff. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but like their online infrastructure is like number 3 right below uh, Amazon Web Service and Google's equivalent. So they're mm -hmm. like up there in terms of like how to handle internet infrastructure Azure? And, uh, web Microsoft Azure, Azure that's it yeah, yeah Azure so yeah. they they know how to handle things like this yeah absolutely um that being said I still don't think you should have to pay to play online multiplayer I think that it's a uh, it's 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 freaking uh you, at this point you probably probably shouldn't have to pay as much as we do for it right you know, because sixty dollars a year, but like that, you're paying a game a year just to play all of your other online games, you know, online. Um, but the thing is, like, this is how they get you. Because the reason why I pay for Xbox Live every year, even if I'm not playing multiplayer games, is because I was playing. I think it was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, and I wasn't playing that online. But my gold subscription lapsed, and all of the features that you normally are greeted to on the home screen. We're gone. Mm -hmm. I basically had two options in in the title screen, uh, single player and options, and that was it. Like <laughs> everything else disappeared, and that was a game where like it had a really interesting online integration into single player, but it was just a blank map after that. Like so, it like completely altered the single player game. So yeah, I yeah. like renew my subscription just so I can you know play the game I had been playing the past few weeks. Yeah, certain things like even in like Mario Maker, you have the 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 pseudo Miiverse integration where like there's like the mm -hmm. little like uh little notes come up and stuff, and like you miss yeah. things like that when you're not paying for the subscription. Yeah, um, that's how that's how they get you. And one the the price of one game a year really isn't that bad. Uh, yeah, in the grand marking, scheme of things, no. Marking that up to two games a year, that's bad. I don't know about that. I think I I think I'm good without having uh my my little ghost racers and my Need for Speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At, at that price, you start to like reevaluate if it's really that important to you, and you know, especially playing two games a year at once is a lot of money. You know, one hundred and twenty dollars up front is a lot of money for a lot of people. They're not going to do that. It it's it's weird because like these online games. The, the servers are on the, the developer's end, right? Like, when you're playing, especially when you're playing on PC, like, the, it's the, uh, up to the developer to have the server maintained. So I imagine not, it's the same on Xbox and PlayStation, right? Like, they, they, there's something has to be happening. Well, yeah. Like, why are we paying Microsoft to be able to manage Call of Duty's servers? I think, because you know? I know, like, uh, EA, you know, does this all the time, but every... EA is the only one who really announces it, but every developer does this. At a certain point, they will shut off online services for their games. But that's on the developer end or the publisher end. That's not on Microsoft's end. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I guess Microsoft is really just making sure that the publisher's servers can connect to uh, the Xbox databases so that it can get out to the, the players and stuff. But it, 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 they, it's, is it's, that really a sixty dollar a year charge from like sixty million people or however many are connected to Xbox Live? It sounds like it's the service itself. Like like on on uh, uh Nintendo has the worst one in that like uh like 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 the like the integration with its own OS. Like 
like adding yeah. somebody to a party or, or or trying to join up in a game like on xbox and playstation you can just have go to your friends list say oh will's playing uh call of duty and you can just hop yeah. in the game from the friends list um you can't i mean it's a it's not as well integrated on the switch at all yeah. um so i'd imagine that that is that like dev kit is like part of what they're giving developers and that that that's where some of the value is but right. um this I, I don't know how it is on like the server side there's gotta be something yeah i, I mean microsoft the playstation are connecting the developer to their players so right like, that's where their value is but i don't know yeah. how much of that is worth what we're paying to them yeah and and there's a lot of switch games that just completely circumvent nintendo's own yeah. situation they just do it all yeah. on their like rocket league uh they, they have their own uh, like you know like a like way to connect players together well rocket league is free to play now yeah but so, that was that was yeah. a thing before switch online even existed oh true yeah that's what i mean like you could yeah. you, it, that was a game where everything was in rocket league itself and you could add yeah. friends and join up with other people inside of rocket league it didn't touch nintendo's own ui at all yeah and you could still do that on stuff like you know xbox and playstation but uh yeah they, they have much easier experiences yeah but i'm not a developer so i don't know exactly what we're paying for with the, <laughs> with microsoft the playstation but again 60 dollars. i'm willing to spend for this sort of experience even though i mostly play warzone and now that's gonna be free so yeah what am i paying for but i i mean i have an ultimate subscription so i'm really paying yeah. for for game pass and game pass yeah. is great i recommend everybody check out game pass the, the the free games you get with gold aren't really worth it anymore uh i didn't put it in the keep because they didn't announce sony's uh playstation plus games yet but there are actually some decent games next month for xbox what's the decent one let's just get the decent one uh gears 5 and the resident evil 1 remake oh that's pretty good and in and indiana jones and the emperor's tomb which i'm currently playing right oh now. oh my god you idiot <laughs> so this is like well, a will can... month there's a will month yeah <laughs> which is good because my mic wasn't connected weird um I, I was going to buy Gears 5 and I don't have to anymore. And I have, you know, I've I've now only bought Resident Evil Remake once. <laughs> and that was back on the original GameCube. And I have it for every system now. Um, so Gears 5 was, is on Game Pass. So that's just, you know, yes. now you get to keep it, yes. I guess. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you can keep it as long as you have an Xbox Live Gold subscription. Oh, so then it's not even. So then get out of here with that. <laughs> yeah, but I I don't intend on letting my gold subscription lapse. Right. Again, that's how they get you. I think they're going to just get rid of gold or merge it into ultimate, and that's it. Eventually, you won't be able to buy gold anymore. It's going to happen. I mean, this this seemed like it was the start of it, but I think because there was enough stink about it, I don't think we're gonna see the end of gold anytime soon. Mm -hmm. because be. uh, there, uh, people have made it clear that there is inherent value in just having gold like uh, they may not be happy with the fact that they have to pay to play online but they're willing to do so if it means getting the best experience possible on console and just that I, maybe I, they're not necessarily interested in game pass and what game pass has to offer I, I think the outrage is mostly uh, the, the headline of xbox live is now double or it's double the price now to play oh, online with other people 100 percent, yeah but once you start digging a little deeper and you start realizing that they're definitely doing this so that more people buy game pass ultimate subscriptions hmm. uh and then you get the people who don't want to do that because you can't buy game pass ultimate subscriptions for anything other than once a month they don't do like you know x amount of dollars for a year it's just fifteen dollars a month, and that's it. And I didn't know. That, that. Yeah, and that's you know, fifteen times twelve. I'm not a mathematician, but no, you can get a twelve month code. Can you? 
So that's Amazon. $180. 120 on uh oh wait, this might not be ultimate. Yeah. No, it's just Game Pass. Game Pass Ultimate for three months. This is on CDKeys.com. I don't trust this. Mm, yeah. <laughs> GameStop. Everybody loves GameStop. Oh, we should have had a story about how GameStop, the stock price is like a million dollars right now. Yeah. How is that possible? Everything I see, it's like Reddit made uh, GameStop. Yes. GameStop that, is, that, is, that is what happened. I'll, I'll add a story about that. Okay. Um, $30 Game Pass. This might be regular. Yeah, no, this is regular Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have a year of ultimate. No, All I got right, so- I got a dollar. I paid a dollar for a month. I upgraded yeah. myself for a dollar. Well, now it's a dollar for three months. If you, if, you know, first time subscriber. I was a first time subscriber. There's an I'm seeing a codes for ultimate. No, wait, this this says ultimate, yeah. and you click on it, and then it doesn't say ultimate. Maybe there I'm was a the- time where there was ultimate subscriptions. Maybe. I'm on their website right now and for the the Game Pass website and it says ultimate $15 a month um the PC uh Game Pass is $10 a month and the console Game Pass is $10 a month but there is no option for buying it for a year it's so join $15 a month show more purchase options Uh, I should have done this. I'm going to do this in an incognito window. Okay. Because it knows. It knows that I have it already. <laughs> Blocked. All right. Copy. Incognito. Paste. Oh, it wants me to sign in. Yeah. All right, somebody who doesn't have ultimate needs to confirm this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't. Why, hold on a second. Yeah, just click on show more purchasing options. It's uh, it's under, it's next to join. There's like a three dots. Yeah. Well, it's all, all, on X. I'll, I'll show you on GameStop. Uh, like up here, you see ultimate, ultimate, ultimate three months, ultimate three months, and there's one for GameStop, yeah. and you click on it, and then it says regular Game Pass for three months, and this is oh, more for PC. Purchase options. Let's see. Let's see. It I takes think... me to a different page. Redeem a code. Yeah. No. Show more show more uh purchasing options just takes me to the main game pass ultimate page it looks like you know the page you would go to if you were going to buy a game mm-hmm. and it just says you know a dollar for three months and it gives you the overview i i think you- there used to be an ultimate subscription for three months because i'm seeing i'm seeing it all over the place just not yeah. on microsoft <laughs> so i think yeah. that they put the put the nicks on it i think so I think now you can only get it for a month at a time. Very interesting. Yeah. How anti-consumer of them will. <laughs> so I guess I'm paying fifteen dollars a month to, to. Well, I know, like, all right, on the movie side of things, a lot of like, I think Netflix is month by month. They don't offer a, you know, an all uh, all at once subscription. Uh, I don't think Hulu does. So, I mean, so that's not, it's not uncommon to do that, but yeah, for Game Pass, you have to pay $15 a month, whereas Xbox Live Gold, you can do it, you know, pay one, a a cheaper price for the entire year. So I don't think they want you doing that with Game Pass just yet. People in the chat are asking what's wrong with cdkeys.com. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, I'm looking for like the MSRP of a, Three for, months for something that, like this that's a reseller from the source yeah that that that's a cd keys is a reseller i'm looking for yeah. like like the actual price and like it looks yeah. like new egg and gamestop and not even gamestop actually this looks like it's misleading but new egg and like yeah. somebody in the chats at amazon those are i think those are old keys like i don't think they're s- still selling ultimate yeah. packages anyway um 
So there you go. That's it. That's all we got to say about Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, good. Th- they, they they did good. They went back on it, even though it's still kind of weird that you have to pay to play online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we got here. What do we got here? We got JJ Max with six months. Wolf F. Thank you. We got Jin Wong with eight months. Love watching the Wolf Bros. I lo- I love you too. And we got Eep with three months. Uh, MH Rise Switch and Pro Controller just revealed. Oh, Mazda Hunter Rise. I I actually just put that in our quickies section. It's uh the Monster Hunter Rise Ooh. Switch. All right, we'll talk about it later. That's yeah. pretty. That's pretty. Because that that just got announced. Yeah, that is very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Eep. And get away still with ten months. Stay cute, Wolf Boys. Thanks, did try we try really hard um all right tingle the tingle guy retires i don't like this i don't like the title (laughs) because he also made captain falcon dude like yeah like why are we focused on so much more because tingle was what get hit what gets headlines bro it's not even though it's like not as important as the other so he made freaking uh uh fox mcleod dude Take- takiyama imura an artist who worked with shigeru miyamoto in his creation of iconic nintendo games star fox f-zero and majora's mask is retiring Imura worked for worked 32 years for Nintendo and is famous for creating the Zelda franchise's map merchant Tingle, who has made numerous appearances in that series and other games over the past two decades. Uh, his message, according to a Kotaku translation, says, This is my last day going to work. I took a selfie with the empty office. I guess I won't be coming here anymore. As you'd expect, I'll miss it. Imura, Imura joined Nintendo in 1989 and has worked and ha- and sorry, I am I am stroking out here. Imura joined Nintendo it. in 1989, as work was already underway for F Zero, a Super Nintendo racing game that launched in 1990. After I joined, Miyamoto gathered some of the new employees and said we could work on the new system. Imura recalled in a 2017 interview, "Even now, I clearly remember how happy that made me." F Zero was originally conceived as a wheeled car racer, but uh, depicting moving tires on a vehicle added significant more frames to Imora's animations. Uh, Imora said the, te- the team of nine developers simply decided to lose the tires and have the racers hover, completing the game's futuristic appeal. That's pretty cool. Imura, yeah, that's it's amazing how you know an iconic franchise was born out of let's not let's not add wheels. Te- well, it's technical limitations. They, they had technical right. limitations. They're like, screw it, you float now. Yeah. Uh, Imura was also an artist for the team developing Star Fox, the 1993 Super Nintendo game that was the company's first use of polygon- polygonal graphics. Imura designed the characters, making them anthropomorphic animals in Miyamoto's dis- uh, direction. From there, Imura modeled the characters' faces on his colleagues, though with protagonist Fox McCloud taking after Miyamoto and wingman Falco after two... St- how do I say, say this to you, oh. Yoshi Watanabe? Where, where are I don't even know where you are. Uh, f- right above the the original Star Fox drawing. Imura models Su- Suyoshi. Suyoshi, Suyoshi Watanabe. Right, I forgot the T's silent. Um, 1997 interview. Imura revealed that Pepe is director Katsuya Iguchi, and Slippy Toad is longtime Zelda developer Yoichi, Yoichi Yamada. Yamada. So, yeah. And that's a drawing of Star Wolf, the nemesis from Star Fox. And his crew. His ragtag yeah. crew. Yeah. Wasn't Peppy uh, part of that? Oh, no. Well, these are the, his new crew. Uh, No, Wolf. I think Wolf was a part of Star Fox originally, like when James McCloud was running it. Right. Wasn't Peppy part of that? Yeah. 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 And then he went bad, and now he's got these freaking idiots with him. Yeah. Uh, the most lasting character Imura designed and rendered, though, is Tingle. First Get appearing in Majora's dude. Mask on Nintendo 64 in 2000, Tingle's outlandish image and behavior made him a comedy relief uh, favorite with fans. He returned in Wind Waker and cameoed in several other games, including four of the five Super Smash Brothers, all but the first, and 2014's Hyrule Warriors. 
Tingle also starred in a series of DS games, freshly picked Tingle's Rose Rupee Land, Tingle's Balloon Fight DS, and Ripen Tingle Balloon Trip of Love. What? I don't remember these at all. You've never what? heard of these? I've at least heard of Tingle's uh, Rosy Rupla- uh, Rupee Land. Why Actually, no, I've heard of Tingle I've heard of Balloon Fight. Trip of Love, dude. What are we looking at? Give me a video. I don't know. I should note that, yeah, Tingle is a comedy relief favorite with fans in Japan. <laughs> and he got these three games. These three games are Japanese-only games. Yeah. Because we here in America don't care too much for Mr. Tingle. Was this a point and click? Oh, my God. There he is. There's Tingle. Oh, there he goes. Yep. This looks like trash. Well, not happy yeah. about it. Still no mention about him making uh, Captain Falcon. <laughs> Hell, dude, that's his most important contribution to me. Uh, well, maybe you should write for Polygon, Bob. <laughs> gonna write a nasty letter. That's what I'm gonna yeah. do. Um, it's. I mean, the way he sounded like he was uh, leaving. It sounded like he. He's like, well, I guess this is the last day. Like that's it. All right, goodbye. Yeah. No, he didn't. It's, Weird. He didn't make that big of a deal out of it. Oh yeah, that's it's like oh, I guess this is it. That I expect, but but yeah, I don't know. Could be just the translation, but it sounds like it sounds yeah. like you know he didn't want to leave, but he's leaving. Yeah, he's probably just retiring. He's probably just old. Mm-hmm. Thirty-two years, so it's a it's a good it's a good long chunk. Uh, anyway, what else we got? We got uh oh, I put the. I put the GameStop thing, but we'll read it with the quickies. Okay. Did you play? Uh, we got the Resident Evil Village showcase. I didn't watch this. Yeah, uh, I, watched, I did. I watched the preview. Uh, it was not a good showcase because okay. they, they started showing off like the game, but they were like weirdly edited vertical slices because they would start to show one part and then immediately go to something different. And then they like walk you through like the new gameplay elements and then they go talk about all the other crap they're working on for Resident Evil. Um, the side end article I have in here, uh, I put it because it breaks down everything. Mm-hmm. Like it tells you about, uh, you know, all the, the release date info for Village, new gameplay features, and then all the other crap they announced. So how do you want to do this? Uh, I don't know. You tell me you're the one who actually understands any of this. Okay. And, and right. Billy so in, first, the, in the chat says, "Don't remind me of the showcase." As a Resident Evil fan, I was insulted. I'm ex- I'm expecting. Uh, I I, now I I like Resident Evil. Will likes it way more, so I'm I'm willing to. I'm I, going to be. I shouldn't. I still haven't played seven, and I feel like neither have I. My my enjoyment of this. I mean, before we get into it, I will say like this has a lot of Resident Evil four vibes to it, and we'll we'll explain that in a little bit. But I feel like I would enjoy this more if I had played seven. So right. I need I should like really get on that. Part of the but reason anyway. why we didn't play seven is because it's so different than the other Resident Evils. I think it's so different, and it's uh, it felt it's, like an offshoot to out, me. But it turns out no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, it also like it came out at a time where there was like a lot of other games like I really wanted to play, and for some yeah. reason like the fact that it was radically different and. You know, there was all this other stuff just like push it far down on my list, even though I heard it's incredible. Right. I've heard nothing but good things uh, about it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so they announced that Resident Evil Village will officially be released on May 7th. Pre-orders available now. Um, not only that, it'll, it was originally announced as a next gen game. So PS5, uh, Series X and PC. Uh, the game will now also come to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One day and date with the next-gen versions. Oh. And um, you will be eligible for free upgrades to the next-gen version if you buy the previous-gen versions of the game. So PS4 owners will get the PS5 version, and Xbox One owners will get the next-gen version via smart delivery. Nice. Good, good on Capcom. That's how, that's how it's done. Uh, in addition, they said there's a, 
There's a PlayStation exclusive demo available now called Maiden, um, but there will be another demo available for all systems uh, at a later date. And they also announced like uh, the special editions and whatnot. Uh, we can buy a statue of Chris Redfield in the new in his new design, where he's like this big and he's like jacked as all hell. There's also the uh, the the uh, all I've seen is this giant woman making the rounds. Yeah. Everybody loves this. Giant oh yeah, the very tall lady. Yeah. Um, another thing they said was um, that it's not in this article, but they're going to release a bundle of Resident Evil 7 and 8, Resident Evil Village is Resident Evil 8. Um, if you buy it now, um, Resident Evil 8 will download when it becomes available. So if you didn't buy 7 and you want to try both games, uh, you can get that bundle. How come nobody's talking about this fat guy? And how come nobody's talking about uh, this... Where Where is it? This, this bearded man. Uh, I like these people. So the bearded man, I think it's just an enemy, like a new enemy type in the game. But the fat guy plays into the next article and the Resident Evil 4 vibes because that's the new merchant. Oh. His name is the Duke. <gasps> oh, and no. And he's, he's a lot more talkative than the merchant was like he, like full cutscenes play out before you actually buy something i, I, uh, I, guess, I guess they saw that that people liked the merchant a lot and they liked the way he talked and like it was like it was like fun and, and there's a lot of memes from the merchant yeah. so they were like let's make him a bigger deal and it's like no that's not why the merchant was no, that's cool. not what we want yeah the merchant was cool because I mean, he said one thing he said one really thing, cool. he showed up randomly. He was kind of at odds with the game, but he also <laughs> fit the game so beautifully. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, helping Ethan with item with items is a merchant. He's not the same merchant for Resident Evil 4. Instead, he's a new character called the Duke. You'll be able to buy and sell weapons from the Duke, but I'm sure he'll have more unique wares as the game progresses. Um, so in addition to the Duke they've revamped the inventory so that it uh your item management is more like the resident evil 4 item management Ooh, I like so you this. have the attache the the attache case and you know you can move things around uh a shotgun is the size of a shotgun an egg is the size of an egg um whereas in other games an egg and a shotgun are the same size um take up the same amount of space in your inventory so you, you got to play around with that which is great that was the best um item management system in any Resident Evil game. Uh, in addition to that, uh, so this game is still first person as Resident Evil 7 was. Uh, there's also some new melee element elements this time around. A big focus appears to be on blocking and countering. During a fight against vampiric goons in a dungeon, Ethan can be seen blocking their attacks from kicking one in the chest. Ethan appears to have learned a few new moves since the events of Resident Evil 7. Um, yeah, Resident Evil games firmly seesaw between more action-heavy games and survival-heavy games. Village seems to be going in a more bombastic, bombastic route. Uh, melee attacks aside, enemies seem to attack in hordes now, which should hopefully mean Ethan is loaded up with some extra firepower. Uh, perhaps that include indic that indication this entry is a bit more combat-heavy. Uh, what else did they show here? Yeah, uh, it takes, you know, again, the whole thing takes place in a spooky, rural, European-looking village, a lot like Resident Evil 4 did. Um, so, yeah, it looks like this game is trying to be Resident Evil 4-ish through the lens of Resident Evil 7. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm for it. I mean, I like I like the whole... It's given me some, you know, nostalgia the, the the whole merchant yeah. thing and the and the it's it looks like you're kind of navigating through the village similar to how you did it in Resident Evil Four you were literally navigating through a yeah. village, um, I mean I'm I think that's I think that sounds awesome I'm I'm super for that yeah yeah I do, I, I I do think feel like I need to I do feel like I need to play Resident Evil Seven now though which yeah because uh, it's a it's a direct sequel because you're playing as the same character from Resident Evil Seven Ethan Winters I've seen uh, our buddy. Uh, LP soldier whatever his name is 
uh he yeah. uh, he speed runs resident evil 7 yes uh yeah and there's a lot i've seen some of his speed runs there's a lot of that game looks really cool really interesting and i i do want to play it i just i need to you know pencil it into my schedule and do it when you know the baby's asleep and actually no because I, I i'm a screamer when it comes to resident <laughs> you evil 7, are so i don't know what that <laughs> resident uh, evil 7 nine and a half hours yeah not bad i'm, I'm for yeah. it maybe i will do it so, so when does this come out? So yeah, also, there's a demo um, out right now. You can just play it. Yeah, well, it comes out May 7th. The demo is currently PlayStation 5 exclusive, but there will be uh, another demo available on all platforms later. Okay. So. Do we have Resident Evil 7, right? I mean, I have Resident Evil 7. Oh, okay. I don't know if you have Resident Evil 7. What, do you have it downloaded? Yeah. Oh. Was it a well? How did you have it? Did you pay for it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, th- I, I bought it on a, sale. I thought we had a disc or something. <laughs> no, this game is always on sale. Resident Evil Seven. So. I feel like I might want to play that before this game comes out. Yeah. Um. But Sorry, that wasn't all that they announced. Sorry, said it's, it's a visual demo, no combat or anything, just supposed to look pretty. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Um. The Village was not the only Resident Evil game on display because they also announced Resident Evil Reverse, a multiplayer experience that will be free to anybody who purchases Village. Resident Evil um, Reverse, Reverse, it's a skateboarding game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this game, uh, Reverse, is a competitive multiplayer mode where up to four players play as iconic Resident Evil characters. The full roster has not been revealed, but the trailer shows protagonists like Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Leon Kennedy, and Claire Valentine. That's Claire Redfield, you hacks. <laughs> um, as well as enemies like Nemesis and Jack Baker from Resident Evil 7. Other characters shown include Hunk and Ada Wong. Although, who knows how many more characters it will be when it is released. This basically looks like Fortnite with Resident Evil characters. Not, I was getting Outbreak vibes, but no. It's it's like a yeah. it's like it's like a like a horde mode situation. Yeah. Uh f- yeah, Resident Evil uh compared to Resident Evil Resistance, the multiplayer mode for Resident Evil 3, which was asymmetrical and pit four players against the mastermind, reverse uh on the surface appears more straightforward and combat based. Uh, but we'll have more once we get our hands on it uh later, blah blah blah. But the demo they showed in the showcase just it just looks like uh, Fortnite. It is looks it just, like. Is it just a free for all, and you just pick your character? And if you're like freaking the tyrant, you could just run up and swipe people. I think so. That's weird. Why would that's yeah. weird? This this is gonna be weirdly balanced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't think I would ever play this. Honestly. Well, it's free with the game, right? It's free with the game. Yeah. Which makes me also think they're probably gonna sell it separately, at a price. I mean, I'd give it a shot one time just to see what's up. Yeah. No? Yeah, I don't know. It just looks... It's always weird when you try to put a multiplayer mode in a horror game because yeah. that, like, completely cancels out any of the scary elements to it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially something a bit more action-focused like Resident Evil. So I don't know what what this is going to be like. There's also a crossover with The Division. Yeah, something more up your alley. Uh, Ubisoft <laughs> made a surprise cameo on the Resident Evil stream with the Division 2 developer Massive confirming a crossover event that brings RE-themed earnable items to the Ubisoft shooter for a limited time. Players have to log on to the event in February from the 2nd to the 15th to earn the Leon Kennedy RPD outfit. That's cool. Yeah. I think there are other costumes you can earn. Like, you can earn Jill's costume and whatnot, but, like, the first thing you get is... Uh, Leon's costume. Not making me play uh, The Division anytime soon. Nope, 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 nope. All right. Uh, and the, the last thing they announced was the Resident Evil Netflix movie. Uh, Capcom teased uh, a movie during the showcase previously announced on Netflix animated movie Infinite Darkness. Not much is known, but we did get to see some footage of the film, which will hit the streaming service sometime in 2021. Uh, it features Leon and Claire, and that's pretty much all they showed. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, so it's like a CG situation. Yeah. Not about it. Yeah. Not about it. Yeah. Not uh. So, so outside of this de this showcase, is that where we got Capcom has overhauled his plans for Resident Evil Four remake? Yeah. So uh, they did the showcase and whatnot, and there had been rumors of a remake of Resident Evil Four for a while, and a lot of people assumed it would be part of the showcase, and it wasn't. And the reason for that, according to Video Game Chronicles, is that Capcom is overhauling its plans for the Resident Evil Four remake. Interesting. Uh, Capcom's in development Resident Evil 4 remake has seen some major changes of leadership due to disagreements over direction, according to people with knowledge of the project. New studio M2 has seen its role significantly reduced on the unannounced project, the sources told VGC, and mainline Resident Evil studio Capcom Division 1 has been brought in to lead the new direction. As first reported by VGC last year, the Resident Evil 4 remake has been in development since 2018, led by the Osaka-based M2, the studio founded by former Platinum Games head Tatsu, Tatsuyima Minami. Uh, little has been shared publicly about M2, but people with knowledge of the company said it, it was partly funded by Capcom and comprised of former Platinum Games employees, including developers from Metal Gear Rising and Bayonetta 2. Interesting. Our original, our original report on M2 and Minami's involvement, published in December 2019, was later confirmed by the credits of Resident Evil 3. Uh, the company contributed to the development of the Resident Evil 3 remake, with Minami taking on an executive producer role, but the startup's main purpose was always to lead to the bigger next remake, Resident Evil 4. However, multiple sources have indicated that following a key project review late last year, it was decided that M2's role on the Resident Evil 4 remake would be significantly reduced. Capcom's Division 1, the internal team responsible for Resident Evil and Devil May Cry games, has now been brought in to lead the project, um, according to VGC. It's believed that the disagreement that led to M2's reduced role involved the studio's desire to stick faithfully to the template of the original Resident Evil 4, partially influenced by backlash to RE3's remake, which did not include significant portions of the PlayStation original, much to fans' disappointment. Capcom's production team, however, is said to prefer a direction which would see Resident Evil 4's remake inspired by the original, but with its own unique takes on features, story elements, and environments not necessarily confined to the blueprint of the original, similar to Resident Evil 2's use of Mr. X. Sources said that the Resident Evil 4 remake would now be partially rebooted under new, the new mandate, which would see its release delayed by another year as much as 2023. This kind of direction change is not uncommon within Capcom, uh, and both Resident Evil 2 and 3 are said to have experienced similar overhauls during development. Capcom has declined to comment when contacted by publication. Resident Evil 4 is the greatest game of all time. Horror, <laughs> element, horror installment is regarded as the greatest game of all time. Yeah, we know. Um, so basically, to sum everything up, uh, they are making a Resident Evil 4 remake. Ugh. Um, the, team, the original team behind it wanted to stick closer to the original, whereas Capcom wanted to, to use it more as a jumping off point and do some different things with it. I'm, so I'm going to be honest. It looks like Capcom wants to... I mean, since they're making Resident Evil 8 very close to Resident Evil 4, like they're making it kind of feel a lot like Resident Evil 4, I feel like they're yeah. probably going to make the Resident Evil 4 remake feel a little bit more like Resident Evil 8. They're probably... They're probably going to, like... You know, if they want to use it as a jumping off point and, like, rework the story and whatnot, they'll probably rework... Uh, rework a lot of story elements from eight into the story of four mm -hmm. like a lot of like you know because i doubt it'll be first person but like any extra gameplay elements will probably get added to the resident evil 4 remake yeah i mean it, it, this is yeah. resident evil 4 is a is a classic game that still has a lot in it that works in today's world yes. resident evil 2 and 3 they're also classic Those, games, but the mechanics just don't hold up. Exactly. So Those they needed games to be changed. Needed 
yeah, they needed an update of some kind. Resident Evil 4, uh, yeah, the controls are weird to wrap your head around, but once you do, like, everything else just works. The level design still works. The pacing still works. The combat mechanics still work. Um, it just it doesn't control like a traditional third person game does. Um, I think there's but just minor changes that you need to make in Resident Evil 4 to make it feel like a modern game. Very, very minor. You just need like uh, traditional dual analog aiming like you see in games like Gears of War and stuff and being able to move while aiming. Other than that, you can just keep the game as is. Well, well, being able to move while aiming, I feel like will break some of the game because that's what made it difficult in a lot of parts. See, I thought that, but then in Resident Evil 2, the Resident Evil 2 remake, you can move while aiming. You just move yeah, slower. But that game is designed around that. Resident Evil 4 is designed around you can't move while you're aiming. So that's why a lot of the enemies are harder, are, are as hard right. as they are. So right. you, would, you would have to change some stuff if you're able to move. Kind of like how in Metal Gear Twin Snakes, like some, right. like, like, auto, like uh, what's his name? In the first boss, whatever the hell his name is. Oh, uh, Ocelot. He's like Ocelot, super yeah. easy because you could just, it, you it, you have first person, so yeah. you just look right at him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I feel like M2 is probably trying to, uh, to make it very close to the original, and Capcom was like, nah, dude, we got to make it more like eight. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good opportunity uh, to sell two games to people now. Yeah. Uh and I'm going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you have an, an obligation asshole. to buy every I single do. version of Resident Evil uh 4. I do, including this version. Uh, I don't know. Like I I'm I'm very much against this. I do not think Resident Evil 4 needs a remake, a patch to add in modern controls. At most, it does not need a full remake. Well, you're a Resident Evil purist, Will. Resident Evil 4 purist, I'm sorry. Resident Evil 4 purist, yeah. Because, like, I love Resident Evil 2, but I will never tell anybody to play the original Resident Evil 2. I will <laughs> yes. always tell people to play the remake of Resident Evil 2. Because that is a game that if you wanted to start playing Resident Evil now, that's the game you should play. Because it is the best combination of the old style and the new style. Meta Ascension says people forget all the annoying escort stuff in Resident Evil 4 when you have to babysit Ashley. I'll be honest. Okay. It really wasn't that bad. It wasn't you that bad. You throw her in a dumpster. Because... <laughs> What'd you say? You throw her in a dumpster and you go, stay here. And yeah, then you go you do what you got to do. You throw her in a dumpster. You can tell her to wait. And you know what? She wasn't, you know, she wasn't that bad because she would actually like offer you hints. Like she would tell you, look over there or shoot the things up there if you like you needed help. You know, it's not like, you know, she was completely helpless. She just, she stood behind you most of the time. And if she got carried away, there was always enough time to, like, get her back. And also, she's, like, would disappear for most of the game. Wasn't there escort stuff in 2? Yeah, Sherry Birkin. Yeah, that sucked. That a was literal a, child. That was, yeah. that was horrible. That was a bad time. Yeah. Um, It was better in the remake. <laughs> She isn't bad as bad as Baby Mario, says Redfield versus Evil, <laughs> who I guess is very <laughs> excited for these new games. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Baby Mario is just annoying because he makes that sound. Yeah. I mean, oh, look at all Eddie's. babies are annoying because they make that sound. That is true. Oh, look at Eddie says, I, lo I love how Will talks when he talks about Resident Evil 4. <laughs> it's very passionate. <laughs> I know what I like. <laughs> Apple's making a VR headset. Will, wow, amazing! Wow, so cool. Apparently, it's a, it's yeah. a billion dollars, and I'm not surprised oh. at all. I don't think we're ever gonna see this. Oh, I think this well, is one of those might. things that Apple's working on because they're working on a lot, like a freaking car. They've been reportedly right. working on a TV for like ten years now. I've never believed that TV bullshit. I never believed the car no. bullshit. It, it, it just it makes no sense for Apple to start making TVs because but, they had the Apple TV that was like that was their way into TVs that that's probably honestly what where the the rumor or originally initiated was was somebody saw Apple yeah. TV on like a document and they're like they're making a TV and it turned out not to yeah. be a TV but I think that Apple is working on a lot of wacky things 
and yeah. they'll you know they'll see what works and pick from it because they have to have their yeah. little they have to have their their little toes in the water you know oh yeah S- so uh this is in the event that like microsoft makes a headset and like a vr headset and it blows up and it's like then yeah. everybody needs it so then apple will be like oh we got one too look we've been working on it for like 10 years well i mean counterpoint you look at the smartwatch scene like everybody started dipping their toes in smartwatches mm-hmm. and then apple came out with the apple watch and that like not only you know blew everyone out of the water that set the standard for what uh smartwatches should be going forward i don't think now that's a counterpoint like, will i think that is exactly what i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> well you're making it sound like you know because right now it's like oculus and htc are like the only two uh vr headset makers in the game right now and they're not really you know at a microsoft level or google level mm-hmm. meanwhile everybody who made a smart everybody in the smartphone game was making watches of uh, and then apple introduced their version of it so it's yeah. not like everybody in the tech not everybody in the tech industry is making a vr headset but everybody in the phone industry was making a watch do you see what i'm saying yes because it's it, so it's not it's like close but not the same thing yes that's right, why right that's now, why like, i don't think we'll ever see this i i, I think that uh th- th- i think that my uh, that apple is making a lot of things and, and, and just to see what happens just to see if they could make it as perfect as it could be and to see where the market for that particular thing is going and where they could fit in that market and i don't think right. vr I, I don't think the moons are going to align for VR the same way they did with with the watch, the same way they did with the phone, the same they, the way they do with the TV, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Well, let's see what the article has to also, say. Also, Oculus is owned by Facebook. So they have, right. they well, have, they, they have some tech they started money. Off as a, they started off as a, whatchamacallit, as a startup. And HTC, and like the, HTC with, the, with the Vive is not to be, you know... Uh, forgotten because htc is they're not american but they're a massive company right yeah Let, let's see what the article did says. they sell Apple is, did, they, uh, did htc sell the vibe to, to valve or what no i think they just partnered with it okay yeah apple is uh hard at work on its first vr headset but according to reports it is initial its initial product offering will be intentionally high-end and niche to pave the way for a more consumer-friendly ar headset down the line Oof. In a report by Bloomberg, sources close to the matter say that Apple's first VR headset meant for activities like gaming, videos, and communication uh, will be available as early as 2022, and it will not be cheap. Uh, this first headset will likely be more expensive than rival VR headsets and may only sell one headset per day per retail store. The strategy is apparently intentional as Apple continues to work on a more consumer-facing AR glasses type product. As for the VR headset itself, this product is reportedly set to include Apple's most advanced chip and will feature higher resolution than the headset from Oculus or HTC. The power of this headset also requires a built-in fan, a design choice Apple Apple typically tries to avoid. According to sources, versions of Apple's VR headset with its processor and fan led to the device that was too heavy and too large, raising concerns over neck strain. Uh, Current designs have shrunk the size and utilize a fabric exterior to reduce the overall weight. Uh, It will also be a standalone device like the Oculus Quest. Uh, Apple has streamlined its headset to be much closer to the face, which shrinks the size of the device but removes the space needed for users who wear glasses with VR headsets. One solution Apple said is said to be working on is developing a system where owners can insert custom prescription lenses oh. into the VR headset. Uh, prescription le- lenses will open Apple t- up to additional government regulations, however. Oh, no. Uh, the VR headset will feature many of the same features as com- uh, competitor hardware, but also some AR features as well. The development of AR glasses is early, but is reportedly Apple's main goal as the company sees AR as more mainstream uh, versus VR. However, releasing a VR headset will prime consumers uh, for what to expect when Apple releases an AR headset with a planned announcement reportedly targeting 2023. 
isn't there a way to make it so you can like adjust the focus like why can't we do that why does it have to be a lens yeah i don't understand why like i guess because like at a certain point you know the uh, you need like something sp specific for a person's vision mm-hmm like adjusting adjusting lenses. Like if I take my glasses off and try to look through binoculars, I don't see shit. Right. So oh, like well, I need yeah, to you wear can my focus glasses. That, but you can't you can't get it in focus. Yeah. I'd imagine there has to be a way to even do that digitally. You know. Yeah. Like, is there a way to like make a? Oh no! I, I then they would have done that by now. Yeah. Like to like to so make I don't a, know. like to imagine a mo like you don't need glasses to look at a computer screen. The monitor will just. Yeah. Be the right focus that'd be cool but now we're just spitballing um yeah. i mean this sounds like they're they're like pretty far into it yeah i'd imagine like because you know vr has been on the market for you know years now so i'd imagine like their r d for it has like caught up to you know where htc and you know oculus have been mm -hmm. um but it's just this high because like an HTC, uh, sorry, an Oculus Quest Two, right now, is it's three hundred dollars if you buy it from Walmart, or four hundred dollars if you buy it uh, from Oculus directly. <laughs> oh, so, so, so I mean, uh, I, and the, I know the Quest, the Vive is usually more expensive. The Quest is is I think uh, d doing a great job at making it more consumer friendly because like. You know, like the vibe and stuff. You need to have like this whole setup with like little, little like yeah, you to, like rig your whole room to like track you and stuff. Uh, the quest is yeah. literally just you don't even need a computer. You just put the freaking thing on your face and it, it's gonna work. Yeah. Um, and I think if you want to play more processor intensive games, you could you can stream it from your computer. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that I that's I mean. That's where Apple comes in. They're good at making things uh, uh, easily accessible to, to more people. Yeah, they're, much they're, more streamlined and easy to use. Yeah, they're they're they're, um, they're the best at user experience. So uh, yeah. they they're not going to release this thing unless it's as easy as put it on your face. It's going to just work. Yeah. Um. My my question though is, like, by making it like. How expensive is this thing supposed to be? I mean, it's it's going to have is it's a standalone, so it's gonna have to be a computer that could fit on your yeah. face. And apparently, they're saying it has a fan in it, probably because it's you know a computer that you put on your face. Yeah. Um, it's I, Ed. You know what? It's probably gonna run on Apple's new silicone. So. Uh, yeah. No, oh, it'll definitely do that. Uh, it, okay, so an Oculus Quest. It. A, a 64 gigabyte Oculus Quest is three hundred dollars, and a 256 gig Quest is four hundred dollars. Can I play Half Life Alex on just the Quest, or do I need to hook it up to my computer? Uh, I don't know. That's a very good question. That would be sick if I could just. Do get you have the a quest. quest? No, I don't. Yeah. I almost got one. Okay, this close. Yeah. But I don't know if it's happening. Because I, I have a friend with a Vive, and he has Half Life Alex, mm -hmm. but it's a pandemic, so I haven't been able to go over to his house and play it. Yeah, you don't want to strap his device on your face. Yeah. The Quest Cosmos Elite. Sorry, no, sorry. It's, it, uh, it's, they need to make have better names. <laughs> the HTC Vive Cosmos Elite. Is nine hundred dollars. Yep, that includes a headset, two sensors, and two controllers. So, if and that seems to be HTC's like high end headset. So, this Apple one definitely is not going to sell for anything less than a thousand dollars. But like, how much more <laughs> are we talking here? Um, because when you look at the grand scheme of things, yeah, Apple has a lot of like ridiculously expensive products, but they're not that far out of line with other high-end consumer electronics. You know, uh, their For the HomePod. Same spec. Yeah, 
the home pod like is ridiculously expensive but when you compare it to like a sono speaker or similar spec it's actually not that out of out of whack yeah, that's the thing is you that know, they're, they're they're premium devices. Like like you could get yeah. a smartwatch that's cheap, but it's going to be a shittier smartwatch. It's gonna be it's gonna be a yeah. worse spec smartwatch. Same thing with yeah. the iPhone. Same thing with the with the computers. Um, yeah. The computers are a little harder. It's harder to especially now with the new M1 chip. Yeah. It's harder to uh, match the specs because it doesn't look as powerful on paper, but the benchmarks are as powerful. It's it's a little yeah. dicey but then but then you get a little crazy like with the with the mac pro like you can spec yeah. out a really high-end mac pro and it's and it costs and as much as a car yeah it's way more than if you just got a yeah. pc with the same specs um but it's it's a luxury apple's a luxury brand like the, yeah the, they want you're buying it for the user experience yeah you're, you're buying like you can get a toyota if you want but you know, for the luxury experience, you want a Lexus. Right. You can buy a Casio watch if you want, but if you want the luxury experience, you go for Rolex. You can buy a, a regular ass HP computer, but for the luxury experience, you go with Apple. Right. And that's a lot of why I like MacBooks. Like the the they're more expensive and and uh, uh, it's more of a pain in the ass, honestly, because I like I want to be able to stream when I'm not home. So yeah. it'd, be, it'd be better to get a Windows PC, but the the it's all one aluminum body it's like sleek and it 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 just the way it charges and the way that everything hooks up to it and 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 the way that it just works when you open it up it's, it's yeah i i don't want to get anything else so i i just like you know you buy it and you know as long as it says it's made for mac the stuff will just work mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about you know do i have to you know change my graphics card do i have the right you know, processor, do I have to update anything? It'll, it should just work. Well, that, that's and it's great. So that's the thing with Mac versus PC. On a PC, yeah. everything works. It just might take a little bit of finagling. On a Mac, it'll either work with zero finagling, it'll just work, or it won't work at all. <laughs> and there's nothing you and can I'd, do about it. Honestly, I'd rather have that binary. Right. I'd rather have that than spend like, you know, two days trying to figure out how to get it to work. No, it's true. I would also rather yeah. have that. The, the, that's the, why. That's why I prefer P, uh, console gaming rather than PC gaming. It's the same. You're right. It's the same with console gaming. Yeah. Everything will just work without stress, or uh, it won't work. It at won't all. at all. <laughs> Everything will work without stress, or it'll be cyberpunk. Yes. Uh, Metascension in the chat says you need to either why he's talking about the Oculus, Oculus Quest with with Half Life. Mm. You need to either wire it to the computer, or there are streaming solutions to wirelessly play PC Quest. Uh, games they work surprisingly well and are lag free okay uh, and then Likios says are they going to talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh MGS crossover thing no no <laughs> what is that I gotta look this up now Metal Gear X Yu-Gi-Oh but this is from 2004 there's a Yu-Gi-Oh card that's Metal Gear Uh, and then G G C X Kluke says uh, the Genius Bar is such BS. Yeah, well, don't go yeah. there. I mean, you don't have an well, equivalent for for PCs either. <laughs> now, look, when we so, say we like Apple devices, that doesn't necessarily mean we like the buying experience from Apple. No, we don't. We definitely I don't hate like that. going to the store. I yeah. absolutely hate going to their store. I mean, I have a freaking Hackintosh, dude. I don't even... I yeah. built it. Like, I don't... I also have a MacBook, but, like, I don't buy Apple Care with anything because I'd rather not deal with them. I'd rather just fix yeah. it myself if I, if I can. Um. So, yeah, I don't like the Genius Bar experience. But sometimes... Yeah, I, like I mean, the... sometimes they, they're cool. Like, like uh, I had an issue where my MacBook... Uh, the When there's known issues, like, for example, my MacBook had stage lighting effect. Like, the backlight just died out. That was yeah. a known issue with that version of the MacBook, and they just fixed it for free. They just completely replaced the whole screen, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. Same thing happened with an older MacBook. I had some of the keys started popping off, and and uh, oh, that was something else. My 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 ride symbol smacked into my keyboard and knocked half the keys off. But there was a known issue with that version of the MacBook where the plastic just started to peel off where the palms are. So they replaced the whole thing, no questions asked, because 
the shell needed to be replaced. So certain no issues I, they're good for. I actually have to get the battery in my MacBook replaced. It's out of warranty. So it's like going to be like a hundred and something bucks. But my MacBook is like five years old at this point. They don't service Macs older than five years. So I might run into trouble here. Yeah, mine says that the battery might need servicing because it's going yeah. at like, I Not, think it's like 85% capacity now. But I really... I, I know my battery needs servicing because this does not last very long at all. Honestly, I never use it on battery anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, I do because I like to take it in the living room sometimes. I like to walk around with it. It's the whole point of having a laptop. <laughs> I've been wanting to get a new MacBook anyway, but I got to wait for them to yeah. freaking make that one sixteen inch. Anyway. Yeah, I definitely... Yeah, all right. We got quickies. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Like Nintendo's... Uh, they got a Monster Hunter... Uh, th- They got a Monster Hunter thingy. Wow. It it looks nice. It does look nice. This is translated from the Japanese uh, Nintendo website. Nintendo Switch yeah. Monster Hunter Rise Special Edition is now available. A special designed pro controller is also sold separately. Uh, Read the article, please. Ooh. This, uh... All right, you know, I, 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 I mean, this looks really cool. Um, it's it, so it's a gold dock with some etchings, with some like glossed, uh, yeah. what are supposed to look like etchings, but it's just like a spot gloss, uh, and it has some gold like like design on it. Um, yeah, and the back of the switch has like a silver design. This is cool. Oh, and the Joy-Con have a have a cool little yeah like tribal if, if scroll, design. If you scroll down further, you'll get to the. The pro controller. All right, so it's just, it's got the gold design on it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I I like how like the Mario one is a completely different color. Yeah, and this is cool, but I'd like to see more designs that are a completely different color. This is just the gray switch modified. You know. Yeah. I would have liked to have I seen like a blue one, maybe. The other day, I was like looking at different pro controllers. Mm-hmm. And like, the, this is like, I think the fifth official Nintendo Switch pro controller like design. Because there's the original one, there's the uh, Smash one, the uh, Splatoon one, and the Xenoblade one. And now there's this one. And they're all like the, the standard black controller, just with, like a different color here and there. Like I think the Splatoon one has, you know, the the pink and green grips, but that's about it. Yeah, that's the that's the best you get is is the is yeah. the Splatoon one. I'm surprised they've been like kind of lazy with designing pro controllers because it's just the black one. They don't have like variant colors. They don't have like you can't go out and buy a a red one or a blue one. Uh. uh- this reminds me that uh, there's no way to pre-order the uh, Mario Edition Switch right now. Um, really? Yeah, it comes out February 12th. Yeah. Uh, the only in America, the only thing we got is Target, uh, but it says coming soon. So yeah. uh, you can't actually pre-order it at Target. So that sucks. I would like for this to just show up at my apartment, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. All right, we also got uh, Twitch Leo with five months. Poggies, Wolf Pog, Wolf Pog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Game Stonks, Will. All right, GameStop all is right. making a lot of money all of a sudden, baby. You roll the dice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how. All right, so uh, I will give you my version of this, okay? Okay. I'll try to sum it up for you as quick as I can, then I'll read part of the article. Uh, right. It turns out, so GameStop hasn't been doing good. Stocks have been falling for yeah. years now, and we've all known it. GameStop is going yeah. to die eventually. Um, and I think rightfully so. They haven't really adapted with the times very well. Yeah. In fact, they um, they continue to be just a very bad business yes. overall. So some random like stock market analyst uh, was talking about buying shorts for GameStop basically meaning right. like i know that gamestop's gonna fail so i think everybody should buy everybody should bet against gamestop uh mm-hmm. and i guess the reddit the subreddit r wall street bets 
uh, don't they don't like this guy, and they like mm-hmm. GameStop, so they decided, fuck this guy, let's drive, the, let's purposely drive up the price of GameStop's stock, because we don't like this guy, and also yeah. we like GameStop. These are a bunch of GameStop fans that that wanted to screw over this one analyst. So they just straight up just started buying up GameStop stock. And now it's beyond that, and they're just doing it for the meme. Uh, Yeah, the price fluctuations were a continuation of the war being waged by Wall Street Bets Reddit types against deep-pocketed investors who have been shorting GameStop, GameStop stock and betting on its slow but inevitable demise. As Bloomberg reported today, GameStop, which isn't expected to turn a profit before 2023, has seen its market value tripled to 4.5 billion US dollars in three weeks, burning the skeptics whose any attempt to cover is likely to further propel its ascent. The question now is how long the shell game will continue. Analysts seem to agree that the stock will inevitably collapse again sooner or later. Part of what's going on with GameStop is a test to see whether the financial alchemy that makes one company succeed where another fails can be manipulated by sheer determination. The traditional Wall Street view is that uh, markets are driven by some tie to fundamental value. Corey Hofstein, chief investment officer of investor research firm Newfound Research, told Wired on Friday... What we're seeing is an influx of speculation, of speculative retail traders who don't have any philosophy about valuation. <laughs> yeah, so basically, like, people are just saying GameStop is worth money, and it's becoming true. So the, I, on screen, I have the uh, the last year of stock prices for GameStop. Look at yeah. that freaking bump, baby. It starts at, like, January 12th, and it just freaking yeah. soars. Um, you know, I think now is the best time to buy shorts for GameStop because this yeah. is, there's no way this is lasting. No, uh, people have to keep me, buying stock every single day in order to keep yeah. this life support going, and it's not going to happen. Yeah, no, memes don't have a very long shelf life, um, and something like this, people are going to get bored and stop doing it, and then it's it's going to crash and it's going to crash hard. Yeah, it's going to crash harder than it would have before. Before it was a slow inevitable death. Now it's going mm-hmm. to they're going to get the rug pulled out from under them and it, they're going to yeah. crash and burn, I think. Yeah. Uh here's from the subreddit. The fact that the 140 to 61 drop didn't kill GME is that the is that the Yeah, that's the that's the I think, yeah. acronym. Uh, it just keeps bouncing back to 80. Bloomberg confirmed the shorts still have to cover, and it's on the precip- precipice of breaking. I'm holding fuck these paper hands bitches. Oh, I'm holding, comma, fuck these paper hands bitches. Uh, and then another guy said, $150 will come again. The long-term thesis can't uh, hasn't changed. I don't know why everyone's freaking out from today's drop. Long-term, Ryan Cohen will deliver us all to the promised t- tendy land. Just need to hold tight. It's going to be a, a bumpy ride. You're not going to, you're not, this isn't going to work in your favor. Uh, yeah. It, it spooked the shit out of everyone. $150 to 130 to 100 to 60 at one point. Huge continued drop. Hopefully turns around. My stomach has been churning all day. So that's people uh, doing day trading. That's people like uh, yeah. looking at the hourly, you know, where it is. Not like yeah. where it is at the end of the day. Looking at where it is every hour. Um, I, I, this is this, what, this isn't, like like i could see like an algorithm picking up on this and then because yeah. a lot of a lot of like these like a like a these these like hedge funds and stuff work on algorithms and they just uh yeah. they just buy up stuff that they see having trends i could see that picking up gamestop stock like by accident yeah uh that could that could have contributed to it but um anybody with a brain is gonna look at this and be like no it's not worth it no. Any minute yeah. now, it's going to be a terrible time. Yeah. And there's people here on Wall Street bets who think like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make money off of this. But yeah. no, you're not making, you're not going to make money unless you're, unless you're lucky. You're going to, 
you're doing this for a meme. You're losing that money. This is a meme bet yeah. that you're making. Uh, so buy shorts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> against against their against their judgment. Um, it's wacky. Sure is. Oh, somebody in the chat said that they worked at GameStop and they were like excited that people actually like GameStop right now. It's like the first time people actually are showing that they like GameStop, and I, yeah, I feel that I used to work at GameStop, but uh, I think that that company's not doing too hot. Yeah, no, it's it just keeps finding new ways to take itself further and further into the ground. Cyberpunk Although I will say, I did just buy a bunch of Ghostbusters action figures from GameStop, so hopefully that that helps turn things around. You know, I do. I keep crapping on GameStop. I bought something from them recently. I buy stuff from their website. They sometimes. were having a massive action figure sale, so I got all four Ghostbusters from the new Plasma series for like forty bucks less than it would have cost to buy them all individually. I think it's nice. I, I think Not I got my. Like, I think I got my Series S from GameStop. Yeah. Anyway, Cyberpunk is, is has a big new patch and it's breaking games. Let's do this quick. Yeah, uh, Cyberpunk's big new patch one uh, one point one has introduced a game breaking bug. Um, the the down the street quest appears to be broken for some players. The quest includes a hollow call that's supposed to trigger progress uh, through the main part of the storyline. Unfortunately, some players are reporting that the call remains silent and it blocks progress of the game. Uh, CD Projekt Red has published a workaround for the issue, but it requires players to have an earlier save of the game to try to get the holo call to work correctly. And then it lists the steps. Um, load the game before uh, Takamura and V leave uh, Wakako's office, finish the conversation uh, with Takamura right after the finished conversation. And when the quest was updated, skip ahead 23 hours. If the holo call triggers and dialogue with Takamura starts, then you've succeeded. Um, so 1.1 was supposed to be the first major, like they've been doing patches like here and there, but 1.1 was supposed to be like the first big like update to fix a majority of the issues with the game. Uh, instead, it just introduced a brand new game breaking bug. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming it fixed a lot of little things, but also in, yeah, also gave a really bad thing. Yeah, I feel like this a, is a going major to, bad thing. This is going to keep happening for two reasons. One, yeah, uh, CD Projekt Red is, uh, is in a hurry now to make these yeah. updates. That there's going to be problems. There's so many things they need to fix. Of every time you fix something, you're gonna break something else. But also, uh, everybody's out to find the problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there go every time there's a new update, people are going to try to find the problem yeah. with the update. Uh, so. They did say that uh, there's going to be another major update, 1.2, which is supposed to be larger and more significant of an update, and that will arrive a few weeks after 1.1. 1. 1. Um, we'll see if that actually does anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just never going to play this game. I, uh, I feel so bad because like, I, I feel like I could get into this game, but like I'm afraid to it's just of all the problems. It's just not the type of game I would play anyway, even if it w worked and was perfect. It's just not yeah, it's just not for me. Anyway, uh Vicarious Vision merged into Blizzard and then also they're working on a Diablo 2 remake. So Vicarious Visions most famously last year uh made the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Um so widespread critical acclaim. Everybody loves that game. So Activision thought the best course of action was to just fully absorb the company into Blizzard and have them work on Blizzard-related things. You know, they also worked on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, Vicarious Visions, like, has history with the Tony Hawk games. They have history with a lot of, like, Activision properties and a lot of other things. Like, they've... They have like a long career and they put out a lot of really good games. Jedi Knight 2, uh, Jedi Outcast for the GameCube and Xbox. Yeah. I've heard of them before. That's why I'm looking it up now. Yeah, they've uh, they've been around for years and they put out a lot of good stuff. And, you know, last year they put out one of the best games Activision has put out all generation. So instead of working on another Tony Hawk game, Activision is just like, nah, you're Blizzard now. 
<laughs> and you're gonna do the Diablo 2 remake. I, I guess I guess they saw that it was successful and they were like, well, we got other work for you. So, right, but, but why why fully absorb it into Blizzard to do Diablo and not have them do like another Tony Hawk game or another? Because they also worked on I think Sly Co- not Sly Cooper, Spyro and Skylanders. Uh, no, they made a lot of Skylanders. No, no, no. Uh, Crash In- Bandicoot, insane. Trilogy. They did the Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. So why not have them? do something else along those lines like something they're good at because according to the big wigs who only look at numbers they see vicarious vision is making really good remakes and ports so they're like we got a big remake and port that we need you to do it's called diablo 2 you did a great job with tony hawk you'll do a good job with this come with me buddy but they're not even called vicarious visions anymore. vicarious visions no longer exists Mm -hmm. it's just blizzard now Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, it's and it sucks because I know what like, I know what they're doing because a while ago Activision basically said to Blizzard, "Hey, you don't put out enough games. Uh, you need to be more like Call of Duty and release a game a year." And that's why like they sped up process on Diablo Four. That's why they farted out the Warcraft Three remake instead of giving it the proper time it needed to develop that's why they put out that mobile game that everybody hates that's why we're getting overwatch 2 instead of you know just updates to overwatch um basically it's activision's way of like strong arming blizzard into like being more like activision right which sucks (laughs) it sucks for us the consumers but it's better for investors yes and that's all they care about Investors who agree that Bobby Kotick makes way too much money. Who is that? The head of Activision. Oh, yeah. Well, they all make too yeah. much money. Well, well, like him specifically, they've said. It looks like Vicarious Visions made a lot of great games, but the ports of them, not the actual great yeah. games. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, they knew what they were doing, and, like, they were able to... Like, Tony Hawk was a dead franchise until... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Like, they showed how it's done. And rather than, like, continue to ride that good wave, they're just, like, completely absorbed them into Blizzard, which just sucks, because I would have much rather had a Tony Hawk 3 and 4 or um, a brand new Tony Hawk game rather than Diablo 2, which you can still buy. Yeah, what after Diablo two? What else is uh, is Blizzard gonna have for Vicarious Visions? Make more yeah. remakes? Yeah, that's weird. No, they're it's, they're gonna shut them down, and that'll be the end of it. It's weird to be absorbed into it. Like it'd yeah. be different. Like work with them, like how Raven works with whatever Call of Duty developer. Yeah. Uh, we got two more things here. We got Celeste devs release mm-hmm. Celeste two out of nowhere, but it's just uh, it's. It's like a it's like a short little tease. Celeste devs release retro Celeste mini sequel to celebrate the game's third anniversary. Celeste is a beautiful, heart wrenching platformer that takes skill, patience, and wrists that won't quit on you. What? Oh, like because it's hard, so like your wrists might give out. Okay, it's hard, but yeah. that's kind of the point. It wants to teach you a lesson about never giving up, even when you don't believe in yourself. Celeste Classic 2 is a free Pico 8 platformer in a similar style made by Maddie Thorson, Noel Berry, and Lena Rain, two of the developers and the composer, respectively. To celebrate the three-year anniversary of Celeste's release, and it's hard in italics. Here's a tweet of it. Pico 8, if you were wondering, is a downloadable fantasy console that anyone can make games for. All the games on Pico 8 are 16 colors and a display of only 128 by 128 pixels, lending the library of games a unique, chunky pixel look that goes great with retro-inspired design. That sounds awesome. Yeah. If you're actually wondering why the game is called Celeste Classic 2, then you'll be pleased to know that the original called Celeste 1.0 is also available on the Pico 8 (laughs) website. The game, which was the precursor to the full Celeste we know and love, was made in just four days back in 2015. 
A version wow. of Celeste 1.0 can be found in Celeste inside a hidden room in Celestial Resort Side A. Yeah, I remember there were like uh, low poly versions, like low poly levels, yeah. I think. Although it features similar if paced, if pared down mechanics, Celeste Classic 2 features a new grappling hook instead of the air dash, as well as a character that isn't Celeste protagonist, Madeline named Lonnie, so the new character is named Lonnie. Uh, there are at least 16 new strawberries to collect, and according to the people in the comments, it'll take anywhere between 5 to 60 minutes to complete. 5 to 60 minutes to complete. That's a big difference. Probably 60. Let's just say yeah. 60. You can also listen to the beepy boopy soundtrack on Lena Rain's uh, band camp. Have you beaten Celeste? Blah, 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 blah. And this sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm going to download it and I'm going to play it. I'm going to put this in my little notes here so I don't forget. Let me put it right here. Nobody look at this. This is my script for my next video. Don't look at it. This, yeah. Um. Also, Cyber Shadow's out today. So I got Cyber Shadow. I got yeah. Celeste. I got a lot going on. Um. Last thing we have here is Apex Legends launch date appears to have been leaked once again. Oh boy. So a while ago we saw that Apex Legends uh the launch date was released. So they leaked they had a trailer for season 8 that got put up on uh the Japanese uh freaking like YouTube account uh mm -hmm. early and in the comments it said and the Switch version not in the comments in the description it said and the Switch version will be released alongside the launch of season 8. Uh but it was only in the Japanese version. I think that that was just a mistake and that wasn't supposed to be there. But yeah. now, Japanese release trailer for the game mentioned the version will be launching on the same... No, wait, that was last week. Um, what's this? Apex was originally... What is this? Now on know, Amazon Japan here. listing for the Champion Edition has listed the same date and pre-orders are live. The same date and pre-orders a lot. So you can pre-order it now uh, on the Japanese Amazon. Yeah. I think that, once again, this is just a mistake by the Japanese arm of of uh, EA, you know? Yeah. It, it says, quote, For those who game on the Nintendo Switch, we're still hard at work on the port, but in order to do justice to the game and make it into the great existence experience switch players deserve our team needs more time this year has brought an unexpected new challenges to put it mildly and we don't want to rush anything out that's what they said uh when they delayed the switch version right so we still have no actual hard date on the switch version of apex legends i think that th they just forgot to update the japanese you know distributors like hey yeah. uh th it's it's still delayed. We, we don't have a date yet. Like, <laughs> I don't trust unofficial dates because it could have been an internal yeah. date and they don't plan on hitting it, you know? Yeah. Also, too, a lot of times stores will just put up whatever date they think is, like, it'll hit or, like, they'll put up a date based on, like, what they hear on the internet, so. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, February 2nd is when Season eight's coming out. The season eight trailer has no indication of the switch at all. So mm -hmm. uh, don't hold your breath, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Soon, though. Soon, uh, supposedly soon, we'll be hearing something about switch version. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's all the news. Okay. But we do have one more thing. Oh, boy. You know what time it is. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. We have this one's from Jor L. Embiid, <laughs> the other Jeff. Yeah. And it is a poster for uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And it says, They will kiss. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Well, I saw this trailer and everybody was going nuts over this trailer. It didn't look good. It, I mean, what, do you, what did you expect to see? I, you know, I expected more only because of what everyone else was saying. Everyone else was making such a big stink about how great it looked. And I, I watched it and I was like, this looks like, like cheese ball city. Yeah. 
I mean, look, I'm not expecting a cinematic masterpiece or anything. Um, I just want to see two giant monsters beat the shit out of each other. And this movie looks like it's going to be exactly that. Um, we all know that the greatest versus movie is Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> so I don't expect it to be anywhere close to that. But I think it could have what it takes to be the second greatest versus movie. Uh, this is, uh, what is his name? Ken Watanabe? Yeah. Let them kiss. Let them kiss. Um, yeah. I'm excited for this. I didn't see the last Godzilla, so or, or me Kong. neither. I didn't see Skull Island. Apparently, Skull Island is very good. I've heard good things, like, like legitimately very good. I've heard King of the Monsters is not that good, but I still want to see it because I want to see big monsters beat the snot out of each other. Now we're gonna talk to you people. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you left a comment over on the YouTube version of this video over on youtube.com slash Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer a select few of you. But of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions in the comments so we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. What did we talk about last week? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> We'll find out right now. Uh, Canadian yeah. gamer dad eighty four says people freak out uh, way too e easily about this technology is taking over. During the summer, with beautiful weather, people were itching to get outside to just be in the sun. Oh, this is about kids, not uh, kids not kids playing too many games while they're stuck inside. <laughs> yes, going for walks and playing in the front yard right now in Canada. Who wants to be outside in negative 15 to negative 25 degrees Celsius at night? That's fine. I'm happy with my video games, YouTube, Twitch, Wolf Den, not to mention if parents are so concerned about their kids' screen time, they then play games with your kids. I have a four-year-old that sits in front of a computer for the morning during his virtual school, better believe, when I finish work with him and I are in the living room playing with blocks or whatever we want. Can't blame the kids if the parents don't want to spend the time with them. I 100% agree. I think the problem yeah. is that um, people who look down on kids playing games don't play games themselves. And you yeah, exactly. you are with it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, the people who write articles like that New York Times article uh, are not with it. Yeah. So to them, video games equal bad. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a, it's a shame because you thought we had moved past this. You know, you, yeah. you thought we had moved past things like uh, the Mortal Kombat controversy of the '90s or the GTA Hot Coffee uh, controversy of the 2000s. You thought we would like enter a new enlightened age of like accepting uh, video games as an entertainment medium and as an art form. Uh, but no, no, they are still a horrible, horrible device that will turn your kids into serial killers and rapists and uh should be heavily regulated uh by anyone other than the parents because they don't want to do their jobs no uh mako fox 22 says hey will what are your thoughts on carnage as a character and are you excited for the new venom movie so uh no because i wasn't i didn't like the first venom movie but i think carnage is you know really the only choice for a villain in that movie um, actually, I'm a little bit more excited for Venom 2 because Andy Serkis is directing it, and I think he's a better director than the last guy they got. Anyway, Carnage is a great character with only one story to tell. Anything after that is just kind of like repeating itself or banking on uh, the fact that he is a scarier version of Venom. There's not much to him outside of the one good story, which is the first Carnage story. Venom has evolved into something a bit more terrifying and it takes not only spider-man but also venom to team up to stop it and that's a great story it's just it's only so many times you could tell that uh kieran do do dochery dochery okay docker <laughs> Dockerty. New York Times ran a bunch of articles in December along the lines of, quote, the games that got us through 2020 and games to relax to. So which is it, New York Times? <laughs> we agree. I think we I think we yeah. we read that in the somebody said that last week. I remember hearing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just different writers, you know? Yeah. I mean, but you would think that like New York Times, I mean, they're a huge organization, but they they would 
they should have some some level of consistency throughout the organization. Like they should be able to say like, hey, uh, you're writing this article about games, so we have all these other articles about the positive aspects of gaming. So, you know, take that into consideration when you write this article. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they did they did a really bad job of uh of showing both sides. You know? Yeah. They they let the kid speak for like two sentences and then just talked about how bad yeah. it was that he was what he was doing. Yeah. Emily Van Engen says, uh, you might have a point with Pokemon Snap Bob. I loved that game as a kid and have nostalgic memories of playing it, but it might be super hype in my mind, but not as good as I remember it being. Also, I don't want to pay sixty dollars for nostalgia if it's only going to be a few hours long. I don't take pleasure in <laughs> shitting on pokemon snap um but i think it's gonna be like mystery dungeon like the remake of mystery dungeon yeah. that game sucked <laughs> the game was not good <laughs> uh and part of it was because it was a freaking game boy advance game that was also on the ds yeah. and um people liked it back then and they played it now and they're like oh i remember that but they didn't change anything it's like this it played exactly the same anyway uh yeah I, I mean i would hope that you know I, I think i said this last week i would hope that nintendo has learned from, from the past 20 years and have been able to find ways to add to and enhance the gameplay experience of pokemon snap and not just have it be another on rails uh game where you take pictures of pokemon i hope they add more to it than that um but you know, we won't know until we get the game in our hands. Right. I, I, I'm going to play it and I'm going to yeah. see. But I have a suspicion that it's not going to be much different than the original. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Fizak says, it's not only a pandemic, but it's also winter for most people, which I mean 30 or below outside, snow and freezing rain. What is the kid going to do? Spend hours outside in weather? Can't go in to indoor laser tag or go go-karting or we'll catch COVID. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like when it snowed out like our parents used to force us outside to like go play in the snow but uh right. it hasn't really been snowing much i think it snowed today yeah. didn't it it snowed today yeah but like, it didn't stick and uh you you can't but, go, like you can't go play with the neighborhood kids because you're gonna catch COVID. yeah so but even still like playing in the snow like you don't do that for as long as you like play outside in the summer usually right you know you eventually have to come back in because it's cold out there mm-hmm so, yeah, no, he he's right in the sense that, you know, it's winter. You're not going to be outside for very long. You know, you're going to want to go back in. You know, you got to do something while you're inside. Might as well play video games. Now we're in the chat. We got yes. Pan Boy who says, who will win, Kong or Godzilla? It'll be the friends we made along the way. Yes. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen is, and I'm stealing this from a meme already, uh, Godzilla is about to give the final blow to King Kong. He's about to murder him in cold blood when King Kong says, no, we have to save Mothra. And Godzilla <laughs> loses his mind. I hate that. I, I hate it that, too. But hate you know you. what? It, it happens and I will, and I won't rest until everybody remembers that that's how it happened. Mighty X says, Will, what should I know slash look for while reading Watchmen? I've seen the movie and know comics quote well, but I know it's very meta. Uh, so the thing to know about Watchmen, if you've seen the movie, know that it's a lot deeper and more involved than the movie. The movie really only tackles like the surface level elements. Um, it doesn't really get into the more meta aspect of it because the whole comic book is a commentary on comic books and it's specifically written to reference not only other comic books, but the comic book storytelling medium itself. Um, that's why the end, that's why the ending works the way it does. That's why like the costumes are designed the way they are. Uh, also two, uh, two things. One it's, it's violent, but it's not as violent as the movie was. It actually like is a lot more, downplayed and it's not as over the top and two read the extra stuff at the end of every chapter there's like actual prose stuff at the end like you know excerpts of books or like psych psych evaluations and stuff 
read that no matter how boring that seems because that's actually very important to the overall narrative of the book i disagree i think that stuff's boring <laughs> uh that, that's why you are a dummy i just want the good stuff uh we had a, a twitch prime resub for five months from a great journey uh how would you guys reinvent gamestop for a big comeback if it was up to you they should have gone digital way earlier it's you see here i'm of two minds of this i believe there's a place for a store that specializes in selling video games mm -hmm. much like how i believe there's a there's a place for a store that specializes in selling um dvds and blu-rays or you know cds the problem is we don't have uh sam goodies or tower records anymore we don't have uh what was suncoast videos anymore blockbuster videos anymore um those places exist as like mom and pop specialty shops or independent record stores, if anything. So I don't think a big national chain like GameStop is the answer. I feel like if we're going to have a specialty video game store, they're going to be smaller independent fare that um, yes, can cater to the new stuff, but also has a, has the ability to have um, a catalog of retro games to sell for people. Uh, who are more interested in the retro market because at that point it does become a more specialty niche market yeah i don't know i don't know uh if there's really saving gamestop uh i worked there yeah. when it was on the decline um they were really stubborn like their biggest selling point was selling uh selling retro uh, selling not retro games their biggest selling point was selling used games they wanted people to come mm -hmm. in and they wanted you to sell them a, a used version of a brand new game because they made a lot of money yeah. off of that um they didn't really care about older stuff like they started to care about retro stuff because they realized oh these are used and and this is a big market that people would come here for so we could start selling uh you know retro games um yeah that's something they should have done way earlier uh they started there I, when i worked there they started selling digital codes so you could walk in and you can buy uh three months of xbox live or or pe a lot of people mm -hmm. would come in and buy the code to be able to change your xbox gamer tag because they would always get in trouble and then <laughs> and get <Yeah>. their <laughs> their name banned and then have to change it um so things like like they tried i think buying think geek and turning into like uh like a toy store is it was a good idea i just think they yeah. should have done that a lot earlier and and they yeah. should have they should have maybe focused more on the toy store part because will said he's buying toys from there and i think yeah. that that's a and, good thing that they have you know people don't realize this but toys r us did not go out of business because people weren't buying toys from them they people people were still buying toys from toys r us and like Toys R Us was making a profit from that right up until the end. The problem came from when they got bought out. The people who bought them didn't do anything to pay off the debt that they already had and just let that debt grow and grow until Toys R Us could no longer pay off that debt, even though the company that bought them should have paid off that debt. Right. That's what that's what happened to Toys R Us. There, there's also a I, I saw an article something about how GameStop was thinking about turning some of their stores into like a hangout spot so like which I think it, it's a whole nother infrastructure problem um, yeah but there is some merit to like making like 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 a land space so that you can like go yeah. and like a bunch of kids can go and play you know uh, you know 4v4 Call of Duty or Halo or something against each other yeah. like, that sounds it, it, cool it's like a that's like a reinvention of like the arcade scene from right like the early 90s that would have been cool but that I, I can't imagine that in the gamestop that i worked at you know that was yeah. a tiny place and that's you gotta then all of a sudden you're a babysitter you know yeah and people already assume that because you work at a video game store you're already a babysitter yeah people would drop their kids off there it was horrible um yeah so yeah i don't i just think that it's inevitable that they're going to lose money because people are buying stuff online and there's just no yeah. need for a game, a physical location to buy games anymore, except yeah. for retro stuff. Maybe I think yeah. retro game stores, there's some merit there because you want to go and like pour through the catalog that they have. Yeah. And because of a pandemic, we're kind of screwed. 
I think GameStop.com does a good job of having the toys and 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 some retro stuff. I I go there yeah. once in a while. Yeah, I I got my Ghostbusters figures from GameStop.com. I got some socks. Um, so, yeah, they, they come have up an on online store gamer every once in a while. There's like some yeah. coupons and stuff you get. They need to focus more on the online store um, and less on the physical retail store. Probably. Um, I mean, because even Target now. Like they have physical stores that do very, very well, but they put a lot of effort and money into their online store um, and have a lot of online features that you can use. And like that seems to be working really well for them. So do that. Uh, Mystical in the chat says, my girlfriend and I are about to spend 500 to to $1,000 on an espresso machine. What machine do you recommend? Uh, do you have? And what machi- machine do you recommend? All right. So get ready, buckle, buckle in, everybody. So <laughs> I have this one. The uh, do I have this one? It looks like this one. The Breville uh, Infuser. So yes, I do. You purchased it on April 2020. It was five hundred dollars when I purchased it. I purchased this mm-hmm. one specifically because I wanted it to be small and I didn't want it to have an espresso grinder in it. This one comes with the grinder, but the grinder is a little shitty. These two come with the grinder, and the grinder is not that right. great. So for two hundred dollars, I bought a hand grinder. I'm going to eventually buy an electric grinder that is a lot more expensive. Um, Are you gonna get that burr grinder I sent you, or no? I think I'm gonna get okay. the one that there's this one where you it's five hundred dollars, but right. you but you put the porta filter in it, and it pours out exactly eighteen grams every time. So you just go boop, and then it pours it out, and then you're done. So I don't have to sit there and measure every time. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided yet. I just got my stimulus check. Well, it was only $300 for some reason. I'm a little mad about it. Really? Yeah. I don't Cause know my wife on. and I got the, we each got the full six. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So Breville came out with a new version of this, right? I think it's the barista pro. No, it's Breville espresso machine. Bambino, is that racist? Well, uh, bam, the Bambino means child. Oh, like a boy, oh, like a baby boy. So this, this is the Bambino, the a plus. Okay, so this I think is basically the same thing as the one that I have. It's the, it's oh, yeah, the same price. It's yeah, that's why it's that's why it's Bambino. Yes. <laughs> It's basically the same thing. It's just, it comes with a shittier porta filter, which I replaced mm-hmm. anyway. Um, and the steam wand is better. So I think you might want to get this. You said you were willing to spend $1,000. The problem is- Buy the two. Only, <laughs> the only one better than this is $2,000. It's like the rocket, whatever. So yeah. I think your best bet for now, especially just starting is this and spend that extra couple of bucks on a really good grinder. Because the grinder that you get that's built in is, if you get the built in one, is not that great. And grinding is really, really important for espresso because you got to get that nice, fine grind. Right. Uh, you can get the the one you sent was the one that they have, the Encore. The Encore yeah. is a good one and it's, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Encore espresso grinder. Barat's yeah, on. The la- yeah. Yeah. Last week we were talking about coffee grinders, and I learned that there were two different kinds uh burr and blade grinder. This one, the yeah, the Baratza Encore one, that's the one that is recommended by America's Test Kitchen. Um, they said that's the best burr style grinder. You you see it in a lot of coffee shops too, and it's not expensive. Yeah. Uh you gotta make sure it's for espresso though. This one says coffee. I'm I'm a little scared to I recommend think- that. No, that one has a an espresso setting. Okay. Uh yeah. this one, Alex Van Aken, our friend, uh has yes. has this one, the Bar- the Baratza Sete. Oh, this is all oh the uh-huh. Encore is also Baratza. This one's good. I want to get the higher end version of this, which is the one that you put the porta filter in and it just pours out the same amount every time. Yeah. Because one day I'm going to buy a real fancy espresso machine when I save my ducats. So I want to get a nice grinder before I get a nice espresso machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sorry for everybody who doesn't care about coffee. 
that was the coffee part of the show. It was, that was coffee talk. You guys are very informative and great. Thank you. Thank you. Also, shout we out to, to we try to know a little bit of something about all topics, including coffee. Shout out to James Hoffman. Check out his YouTube channel. He's got great coffee stuff going on. Sponge Zed says the Encore is good for espresso. The only reason why I kind of don't want the Encore, for one is because I like the idea of having it pour out by weight. Also, it's large, and I don't know if it'll actually fit in my kitchen where I want to yeah. put it. Um, unless maybe you can get a new top to it. You might be able to get know. a different top. All right. I think the chat has devolved into coffee okay uh matt too says i always get new physical games from walmart since they sell them for 50 dollars instead of 60 for some reason amazon does that too sometimes yeah also like walmart and like target and places and best buy and places like that those are different because yeah you can get games there but you can also get like a refrigerator and uh you know in case of target like clothes and your groceries and things like that. They they sell other things than just games. So, like, they put a lot of focus in gaming because they know that, you know, there's a lot of money there. But, like, they have all this other stuff to make up, like, in case they have a slow day with games. Whereas uh, GameStop doesn't have anything else. They just do games. Also, Walmart and, and Amazon are such big companies that they can just afford to take a loss every once in a while. So, yeah. um there yeah uh gamestop just can't compete in that way it's it's kind yeah. of it's malicious it's kind of like really messed this is this is the monopoly that you know our forefathers warned us of <laughs> that yeah <laughs> small business can't compete with these monopolies because they'll grow so big that they're just unstoppable and that's what happened yeah i'll never forget i, wor I was working at gamestop so walmart used to have stuff for like five cents less they used to yeah. sell games instead of fifty nine ninety nine. They'd be fifty nine ninety five. They so four do cents that for less. pretty much everything, yeah. But so I was working at GameStop when the Wii came out, and uh, or like around the time of the Wii, and some mom poked her head. There were so at the Roosevelt Field Mall, there were two GameStops. Some mom poked her head into my GameStop and said, "How much is a Wii?" And I said, three hundred dollars." And she goes, "Oh, it's two ninety nine at the other one." And she just went to the other yeah. GameStop. Meanwhile. Prices are the same across all GameStops across the country. Yeah. I just rounded up. But because she wanted to save a penny, she went to the other GameStop. Yeah. That's why Walmart it thinks it's worth just taking the loss on a couple of cents. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all for being here and hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put up an archive version of it over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So head out over there if you want to watch it on demand on your schedule whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and on your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you listen or watch us please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because all of that helps us with placement on all of those respective stores literally everybody is streaming right now like the whole <laughs> world is, is online yeah um all right well thanks for being here everybody i will hopefully stream tomorrow because i really want to play cyber shadow uh if i had time i'd do it tonight but uh, i got work to do um and of course we'll see you on thursday for a stream and a video so make sure you have notifications turned on so you know when we go live and you know when there's new videos because that's all important and don't forget yeah we got wolf den podcast we got wolf den clips we got a lot going on okay we got a whole wolf den empire here. We got a whole so, big old wolf den empire who should i raid will uh i don't know who do you feel like raiding beat em ups is making a thumbnail you want to watch beat em ups? <laughs> Make a thumbnail? Yeah, here you go. Everybody watch beat em ups. All right. uh, I will see you all tomorrow, all right? Everybody have a good night. Have some coffee. Stay up all night. Be, be a degenerate. Yeah. Do and bad things. And make sure you say hi to Wood, please. All right? Yeah. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, goodbye.
Bye.